Hi, this is Jack Lipton speaking, and today I'm going to be talking with Greg Andrews, the CEO of Canada Search Minerals, which has had quite a bit of news lately. And I'd like Greg to tell us about what's going on. Hi, Jack. How are you today? Good. So, Greg, I, I see that two things have happened. One, Search has become, I believe, Canada's first rare earth company to be involved in a domestic North American total rare earth enabled product supply chain. That's a, that's a mouthful, but that's a that's a very big move, and it puts Search into into the real top tier of North American uh, rare earth uh, ventures. And second, I see you're making progress on your uh, technology to extract rare earths from from the ore in your deposit. And I'd like you to tell us something about that. So please go ahead. Hi, Jack. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, Search has been in the rare earth space since 2010. And as we've as we've continued to evolve with our project and our district in uh, St. Louis, uh, Labrador, um, we've we've been working on building, you know, we, we look at four pillars of the rare earth of having the resource the technology, the processing, the separation offtake. And what you've just mentioned is offtake being one of those key pillars that uh, we just signed an M a non-binding MOU with USA Rares, who we've been doing some technical collaboration with. And that helps solidify that when we're talking with our funding partners, that they, they can see that there's a, um, an end game for a product sales if we get this uh, project developed. Uh, I, I want to tell our audience that USA Rare Earths actually already owns a rare earth permanent magnet manufacturing facility. And of course, it's going to need NDPR to make those magnets. So I believe that that is the plus for both of your companies. That's true. They have a mine to market uh, strategy as well. So we look to do 500 uh, tons of NDPR per annum just from our deep fox and foxtrot um, projects. And, and that would represent probably the you know, a third of the production that would be out of those out of those prospects. And uh, actually, 500 tons of NDPR would be sufficient to make about 1,600 tons of rare earth permanent magnet. And I, I note that uh, the company USA Rare Earths has also said they plan to expand their production from 2,000 tons of rare earth permanent magnets to as much as 5,000 tons uh, sometime by the middle of this decade. Are, are they looking to search to be supplying that NDPR even for that? Yeah, I really can't comment on that, Jack. I mean, our, our deal right now is just for the 500 tons as we you know, develop our project. I'm sure they're out looking for other sources as well. Um, but yeah, so we're focused on, on getting our projects done with that. Having an offtake is really good for us in terms of, uh, our, like I say, our government funding parties that are looking to, to make sure that we can continue on with our project and have sales at the end of the, end of the day. I have to say that as a one-time chemical engineer, practicing chemical engineer, I'm very impressed by the work that your board member, Dr. David Dreisner, professor at uh, University of British Columbia, has done on the hydrometallurgy for, for your project. And can you tell us something about that? Sure. Uh, Dave started out back in 2010 doing uh, the, you know, with a bench scale, we've, we've completed two successful pilot plants. We've produced our mixed rare earth oxide concentrate and a mixed rare earth carbonate. Um, we're now looking to do demonstration plants to uh, build that out. But more importantly, recently, Dave has now gone back and, and re-looked at doing some physical beneficiation, whereby we're looking at grinding and um, magnets, magnetic separation, which again is going to hopefully drive down our capital and operating costs as we, um, as we continue to develop our technology in that regard. So right now, Jack, we are actually processing um, we, we have 80 tons of material ready to go to SGS to start uh, the, the process of testing that uh, grinding and magnetic separation circuit. And that I also believe you're, you're ahead of the pack in Canada. I, I, I'm making the point that you're, you're a Canadian owned and operated company. So there is another company in Canada doing some uh, supply chain work, but it's not Canadian owned. So uh, you are uh, perhaps, I believe, only the second company in North American owned and operated that is that has entered the total supply chain uh, space. And I congratulate you on that. 
Uh, quite frankly, you're also a survivor. As, as we spoke before, and, and you mentioned that you thought you were one of 600 companies that started in 2010, you exaggerated a little bit because I actually measured that metric and uh, there were 450 rare earth juniors in the year 2012. Um, of those to, up today, uh, exactly one is in, is in production uh, in, in, in separated material, and that is Li Australia's Linus. So you're, you're entering a very charmed circle of, of companies, and, and I, wish, I wish you the best of luck. I, I'd like you to tell us a little about your cost structure and your, your target. Do you have a, a target cost for, let's say, one kilogram of NDPR when you actually are able to deliver that material? Yeah, Jack, right now we, we're, we're in the process of re, redoing that calculations as we're doing our physical and um, beneficiation to the direct extraction process. So we don't have that cost narrowed down right now. We, when we started this business, our whole thesis was always to be low capital costs and operating costs mm -hmm. and be in module. So our PEA, that is really our, our next step is we're looking at taking our, our PEA of 2016 was 1,000 tons per day. And with our deep fox resource, we'll be doing 2,000 tons per day uh, production. And with the new technology that we're putting in place, the physical beneficiation, the chemical beneficiation, once again, we look to keep lowering those costs so that we can compete, can compete on that world scale. Can you say when you expect to be in, in production? Yeah, we're, we're hoping that our production would be a decision to build at the end of 2023. We have uh, things that are in place right now. Our milestones right now is our PEA that we're looking to have uh, January, February of 2022. And that will really lead progress into a bankable feasibility study uh, continuing on. We're currently doing environmental base studies so that we're all, um, so that we'll be repurposing our environmental impact statement with the new information, adding the deep fox resource as, a, as the um, basis for our new environmental impact statement. And what's your target production volume? Our target production volume on the 2,000 tons per day would be about 7,000 uh, tons of uh, rare earth oxides, of which about 16 to 1,700 tons would be the permanent magnet uh, material. That's about 20%. Yeah. What minerals are, are you uh, are contained the rare earths in your in your uh, deposit? Well, like most rare earth deposits, you know, not ninety three percent of our revenue is derived from neodymium, praseodymium, dysposium, and terbium. Those four elements comprise comprise those uh, that revenue stream. And is is the geology of your project? Uh, is it monazite, basalite, alunite? What what is the principle? What are the principle? Uh, uh, Alanites carry the light minerals, and the Fergusonite carries the heavies. Okay, Fergusonite, okay. Yeah, because I don't know of any other project that is that is going to produce heavies from Fergusonite. So that's that's another plus uh, for your company. Do you, do you have any uh, long term plans to perhaps sell technology, process technology? Um, that's a question we get asked when we look at our government funding partners, and the answer to that is we would have to do the same stringent testing that we've done on our project with any other project. So we, we would be looking at taking samples and starting the bench and doing pilots with, along with everything else. So um, we're certainly open to our technology in that regard, and, um, but as you know, every rare earth deposit is unique. Yes, but I have to say that I think that your project is exceptionally high tech, and you you you're you're one of the rare companies that has actually got a, a technology tailored to your deposit that's working. So 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 I take I take uh, if I were wearing a hat I take it off to you. Well, uh, thank you very much. But it's you know it, it's been with our funding partners. David Reisinger has been clearly instrumental. Um, mm -hmm. When he started, when we started our rare earth getting in the space, we wanted to be that low cost producer and mm -hmm. be module. And so Dave actually eliminated our original process, eliminated grinding, flotation, magnetic gravity separation. Mm -hmm. We've only added those back in as the magnetic te technology has increased and uh, retested it and, um, and have had good success that we can now beneficiate our, our resources on, on site. 
I, I note that in, in your announcements, you say that you're, you're cooperating with USA Rare Earths. Can you, can you tell us um, what technology might be involved in that? Well, they use iron exchange. Um, so we're looking at some of that technology and some of our flow sheet, um, you know, working along with that. that. That would be sort of that. We'd also be looking at, uh, you know, con considering our separate, you know, further separation. We're also working with Saskatchewan Research Council mm -hmm. in terms of separation. Um, so, you know, our, our goals here are to get that bulk sample done and then run that material through our direct extraction and have product that can then go into a demo scale uh, separation facility with the end goal, uh, Jack, producing a neodymium metal bar. That's what we want to show the market okay. because it answers a lot of the questions of can you separate. So you really plan to go downstream uh, to metals? Yeah, that's the that's the plan right now um, because that's where it, uh, the market seems to push us that way. I, I think that's absolutely right. I think that's your, uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm impressed because that's, that's the high value add section of the rare earth supply chain, metals and alloys. Yeah. So, so that's very good. Anyway, uh, there's a lot for you to keep us informed about. So I hope we talk to you on a regular basis because things finally seem to be happening in Canada and, uh, it, it's they're not happening in Ottawa, they're happening in Labrador. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jack.